Greetings. I am here to tell you about the scientific method. I'm going to teach you some other concepts first. Uh, one of them is the concept of science. What is science? If you see something that something happens or you want to make something happen or ask why. So what is science? Science is a tool for answering what and how. And of course we know that according to this superhero, knowledge is power. As you know, there are many branches of science. The one that you're currently learning about is chemistry. But that's only one branch. There are many others. Scientific research and discoveries are largely responsible for the relatively healthy and comfortable lives that we enjoy. Science has a general goal. And that goal is understanding. We want to understand our world and also to make our lives better. Scientists use a variety of tools to achieve this is the scientific method. There are many other ways to conduct research or to da gather data. It doesn't always involve experiments. For example, there are field studies, long-term observations, surveys, literature reviews. So the scientific method is just one, one method among many to gather data in order to answer questions. What is the scientific method? Basically, it's a systematic way to approach problem solving. The steps do not have to occur in order. Sometimes scientists start in the middle, close to the end, right at the beginning. It depends. But the major thing that I want you to remember is that it is not just for scientists. Take a look at this picture right here. Well, there may be some questions that we want to ask. One question may be, looking at the lower left-hand corner, what kind of lipstick or what brand of lipstick lasts the longest? Or what kind of shoes should I wear to play basketball on a blacktop outside? Or I could talk about the volume of air and what happens when we increase the temperature. Any of these questions can be answered by not only a scientist, but anyone if we are willing to put in the time to research and experiment. Here listed are the steps of the scientific method. Ask a question, then write a purpose for this particular study. We research, we research background information, things that are necessary for us to conduct the research or even to write a hypothesis. We experiment, conduct the experiment in a variety of ways, and we jot down as much data as we can gather. We will gather numerical data in many of the experiments. Each number will have a unit along with it. And then we will analyze our data. And finally, we draw conclusions. Pause and go ahead and write the steps of the scientific method. Let's look at each one, each of the steps. Define a question. Questions are everywhere. Just look at anything and you can question. I wonder what would happen if, or uh, if I uh, 
do something to this uh, particular plant. If I uh, put it in the shade, put it in the light, or uh, water or not water it, uh, what would be the result of the growth of the plant? I want you to remember once more that it is not just for scientists. The scientific method applies to anything. We can apply it to a lamp. When you walk into a room, the lamp doesn't work. We are immediately drawn to hypothesize. If I plug it in, then the light will light. This is just a very simple example. But it gives you the idea that we are, we're always experimenting and we're always trying things out that we are actually employing the steps of the scientific method. We conduct research to get the background information. And in the meantime, I want you to pause for a moment and think of some tools and list some of the sources that you know that you would go to to gather uh, information. Then we have a hypothesis, a statement of possible explanation. It has to be testable. It's something that we can actually test. And usually it's stated in an if and then statement. Take a look at this statement that I have written here. If the temperature of a gas is increased, then the volume will increase. Notice that I wrote the statement in red and blue and black in the if and then portion. The red statement indicates the independent variable. Then the blue statement, the volume will increase, it is the dependent variable. Because the result, the volume, depends on the temperature of the gas. When we experiment, we collect data. We collect information, usually in the form of numbers. Notice that this chart, there's something wrong with it. This chart doesn't have units. It would have to have units of milliliters, liters. Uh, the temperature should read degrees Celsius or Kelvins or um, any other unit that might be used. Analyze. That's our next step. We take the data, we analyze it, we look at the results, we put it in, in a concise manner so that we can see the, a pattern. And this indicates that um, the volume and the temperature are related as the volume increases, so does, I'm sorry, as the temperature increases, so does the volume. So we're saying that there is a direct proportionality between temperature and volume. Notice that we mentioned that the temperature is the independent variable, and it is on the x-axis. And on the y-axis is the dependent variable. We're going to draw a conclusion. This is where we end our, um, our work or our investigation by drawing a conclusion. The conclusion always includes the original question, the purpose or problem, and it supports or does not support the hypothesis, but it must be stated. So the conclusion is a generalization. It, it tries to, to uh, display the generalizations that can be made. And we also include the sources of error. In class, we will look as specifically at each one of these steps. Well, I have here a way for you to remember the steps of the scientific method. So notice that it says, queen, queen paprika ran home eating apples casually. Uh, so what's the purpose of this?
to help you remember. Q for question. P for purpose. R for research. H for hypotheses. E for experiment. A for analyze your data. And C for conclusion. Please be sure that you have taken adequate notes, that you have followed the procedures that were outlined, and that you write a summary of what you learned right below your notes. See you tomorrow in class.